Right, here we are with a lovely jewfish that I speared this morning. It's a little bit uglier on this side. I saw a magnificent specimen. That along with my Spanish mackerel made for a lovely morning. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to fillet a jewfish. They're not the easiest fish to fillet. They're not the most fun fish to fillet. They're certainly a good eating fish. So let's get stuck into it. First off, we'll give it a good old hose before we come into the flesh. Make sure we've got no sand. Anywhere, always run your hand head to tail. Run it the other way, you'll get these nasty spines into your hand. Alrighty, so pectoral fin up. We cut just behind the head and all the way down to the spine. Okay. And then we slot our knife in. There's a little slot where the dorsal fin goes, and it's a nice easy spot to get to avoid those big thick scales where you can slip the knife in. Alright, up to the head. And we just go the same cut, we're running parallel down the bones that support that dorsal fin down to the spine or close to the spine and then we'll get down to the tail pretty tough old bit of meat down there and what we usually do, stick the knife right through not the best eating down that end of the fish, very tough Right, get the scales off the knife. Okay, so now we have a nice cut. Right down. Up here, so we start. Now, you see we're going to start pulling the flesh away and carefully cutting along those bones so we minimise any waste right down to the spine. We'll do that all the way along the fillet. Push it up. Now we're going to work the knife over the rib bones. Over these rib bones. Then taking it nice and easy. There's a row of pin bones we've got to cut through. I haven't gutted this fish, it's a lot easier with these big fish like this if you leave them whole and don't break into the gut cavity when you're, when you're filleting. The ribs will help stop you from getting in there as long as you go reasonably easy on it. I process my fish the same day and keep them on ice at all times so you won't find a problem with them going off with the guts left in them with these particular types of fish. There are some fish that you should gut like parrot fish you should really gut them if you're spear fishing. You should gut them in the water. They've got a horrible amount of sand, churned up stuff that they've eaten. And they'll make a mess of all your fillets if you if you fillet them with their guts intact and this spills out everywhere. It's a nightmare. You never put fresh water or any other water for that matter on the fillets. Same if you get home from the butcher, you wouldn't rinse your steak under the tab. You don't do that with your fish either. All right, so we're getting there. Now, we can start cutting along, taking the actual first fillet right off. Now, over that fin, you'll find in the gut cavity that there's not a great deal of meat over that section. We always want to try to maximise what we get off. Anything that's left over won't be wasted on this fish because I reckon it's one of the best mud crab baits around the, the, the jewfish frames. There's a good strong smell in the water. Crabs seem to love it. So I'll be keeping this whole frame in pieces and we'll be using it for mud crab bait. Alrighty. Here we have jewfish fillet. Now one of the unpleasant things about jewfish is they sometimes do get these parasitic worms. We've got one right here. This little white fella here. All right, so they're not harmful to people at all, but you do want to remove them because they look a little bit unsightly. So just gently tease it out. There's your little white worm. Throw that away. This fish is pretty clean. That's the only worm that I can see in it. All righty, so we've done one side. 
now we want to bone it and skin it. So Jewfish, the only bones that we've got left, because we've gone under the ribs, we've got one of the ribs left in here, so we'll take that out. Try to take that out. Okay, so we have a row of pin bones, which are vertical bones, that go right to the skin. So what we'll do is, you can see them, they're along this bloodline. So they're quite easy to find, you can feel them with your fingers. Cut your knife at a slight angle in towards those bones. Go right down to the skin. Jiffy skin is reasonably tough, so you don't have to be too careful. There you can see, cut right down to the skin. And here's our row of pin bones that we're about to take out. If you do miss any, that's okay when we skin it. We'll, we'll give it a good quick check to make sure that we haven't gone on the wrong side of any of these pin bones and left them in. I always reckon that people enjoy fish a lot more if there's no bones in it. Alrighty, we're ready to skin it. To always start from the tail. Don't try to get this bit down here, it's just too tough. We'll get in like this. And with Jewfish, you don't want to go right to the skin because it's got a lot, quite a strong bloodline under the skin and that will put a strong flavour into your fish. I don't go too close to the skin. You'll see what I mean as I lift it up. Here you can see I left most of that bloodline on the skin and the fish is nice and white. We'll cut this little bit out here and a tiny bit here, that's not too much of a problem. But anyway, you don't want to, you want to do the fine balance of not wasting any fish, but not having stuff that won't make the fish taste nice. All right, once I've got up to here, I can take this section of the fish off. Into a cryback bag. vacuum seal this new fish and this will keep no problems at all for 12 months in the private bag. So you see we need enough, leave enough air gap at the top to make sure we can get a good seal on the bag. We've got June, March 21. So we know how old it is. We're going to eat our oldest fish first. Alrighty, let's get to work and take the other bits of this fill it off. Okay. Let's go just like this along the skin. Just like this. have another beautiful piece of meat, like a tiny bit of skin on here, knock that off, doggies will love that. Alright, with a little bit of the bloodline here, I'm gonna, just going to take that off as well, with that little bit of bloodline, and now we've got a beautiful cleaned up, lovely white piece of boneless meat, ready to cook, we'll whack that in the bag. Work your knife through under the skin just to the other side. See the bloodline's not nearly as thick when you get up towards the head end of the fish, so it can be a bit more, take a bit more fish. I'll just try and shave a little bit of that off because when people tell you fish are fishy and they don't like it, this is the sort of thing that will make fish a bit fishy. So we'll just take that, doggies will love that. pieces and here you have magnificent boneless skinless jewfish fillet beautiful be beer battered fish or a fish curry alrighty I'm not going to do the other side for you because it'll make the clip too long but anyway you do exactly the same to the other side and that's how you process your jewfish skin frames for mud crab bait or skins can go in the compost perfect for in the compost for growing your garden veggies definitely the frame for the mud crab traps